The Great Outdoors. One of the many miracles that can be found in your own backyard. My partner Daniel and I will set off to Boykin Springs to try out the hiking trails. With the help of our friends, Jillian Anderson and Charlie Jordan. <laughs> to Boykin Springs. Boykin Springs is in between Bufkin and Jasper. A little place called Zervana. Um, Zervana? Yes. So basically we're going to show you guys how to have fun out here. You know, we're going to tell that through our experiences of making this documentary. This documentary, yes, is informational in the sense that it's going to teach people how to be good stewards of the outdoors. But it's also going to give you a behind the scenes look at some of the hardships it takes to make a documentary. Because as I'm finding out today, it's a little more complicated than I thought it was. Clearly I didn't do enough planning, but it's okay. It's the first one, the first one's always going to be terrible. So we uh, we finally got here. It took us a minute, and uh, I don't know. We're just kind of chilling right now. What challenges did we have to face in coming here? Well, the uh, just figuring out what to bring, what not to bring. Uh, the shots, like I saw a lot of potential shots coming in here, but I wasn't prepared. Didn't have my camera out. So just things like that, you know, just kind of just. Kind of testing out. I'm actually glad you asked me that because I need to get my other. Uh, what the hell? Why is this not coming on? Is that it? I don't think that was supposed to go on there. Um, whenever I think about outdoors, I think about bugs and snakes, things like that. <laughs> My name is Charlie Jordan uh, and I work at Outdoor Pursuits as a desk assistant and ropes course facilitator. I think of a, a, a serene place that I can go to get away from everything and just kind of uh, calm down and de-stress from everyday life. I've been wanting to go camping for a couple months yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's like going through a withdrawal. Um, it's addicting to be out here. Um, with the, the fresh air and the, the natural sounds, it's definitely a place I always want to be. I've had zero camping experience. Um, I started camping when I was about 18 months old. Uh, my parents took me to uh, Mineral Wells, um, Possum Kingdom, and uh, all kinds of places. And we went uh, like every month with my best friend's family. And it, it, was, it was always a blast. And then I joined Boy Scouts and I camped even more. I did lots of uh, all kinds of camping from just car camping to backcountry camping, uh, backpacking. Uh, I went to Philmont a few years ago and hiked uh, uh, 86 miles and 75 miles on two separate trips. So I've, I've had a lot of uh, outdoor experience. Awesome. A bit of an expert, huh? That's for sure. Okay, hey. Oh. You can tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, mother. 
I, I don't know much about Boykin Springs, but I'm excited to uh, learn more uh, as I camp here more. So now we are following the group to the sawmill trail. I'll point it out when I find some. It's kind of late in the okay. season for it, so we don't really have to worry about it too much. There's lots of grape around here. Uh, this is summer grape. Uh, it's usually got a really round and kind of toothed leaf. Yeah. And it can use, it'll get like kind of a, a big tooth that way and that way. This is a uh, muscadine grape. You can also make a wine out of that. And they're pretty tasty. No. They, I've eaten them before. They're delicious. There's lots of seeds and it tastes like you can see. Not the not the leaf, the berry. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, a southern magnolia. They're uh, very pretty. And so it looks almost it looks like really rusted. That's what a lot of people like is the dark color on it and the the kind of uh, shiny, waxy surface. Yeah. It's cool. The way you can tell that it's a black gum is um, that its branches go straight out. They're like perpendicular to the trunk. And this is a red maple. It kind of has like a, a duck foot shape-ish. What is that, this berry right here? Yeah. Uh, Yopon. And uh, if you drink it, it'll, it'll, you'll throw up. <laughs> Why? Uh, because, because it's kind of toxic to us. But it won't kill us. Uh, Native Americans used it for in their like ceremonies and stuff. <laughs> its scientific name is Vomitoria. That's funny. <laughs> cool. The, there was a beaver that chewed the tree and cut it down. What do you think about that? <laughs> That's cool. I've never seen it before. If you were a beaver, what would you do? I would continue chewing down on the tree. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm going to continue filming. <laughs> That's a lumberjack. <laughs> okay, I'll eat that. <laughs> Can you imagine trying to lug those camera cases over here oh my gosh <laughs> i didn't know i didn't know why y'all were bringing those well because we want to protect the cameras because we're not trying to pay for these but now i realize this is out of control all right jillian let's go let's do this <laughs> yeah i actually got the easy way <laughs> Never mind. you're blocking the way dude you're just like hey what the hell's happening <laughs> We're lost! Like in a bug's life. <laughs> the leaf falls and they're like, we're lost! Yeah, dude, they're like going haywire right next to the camera lens. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's awesome. Dude, you might want to get the camera up. They're about to attack you. They're going in the camera lens. Honestly, I'll get them off, but that would be a cool shot. It's a, a little crawdad that I caught while washing my hands in the stream. I was trying to catch a, a, a frog, but it got away, and then I tried to catch a bigger crawdad, and it got away, and then I caught this one. Is it a relative of a crab? I'd say closer to a lobster. Yeah. I don't know what the thing is. Or a, or a shrimp. Eat it. Should I? I think you should. No! Are you ready? I'm going to do it. I'm going I'm to do it. I'm going to do it. What are you doing right now? I'm going to eat it. Eat what? I'm gonna eat this crawdad. <laughs> I'll, I'm not. I, I don't know how I feel about its its claws. I want to pull its claws off. No, that's mean. <laughs> oh, 
All right, here we go. I've never eaten a bug before. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm trying to psych <laughs> myself into doing it. Come here, you. Okay. This <laughs> is so weird. All right. Ugh, that was weird flavor. That tasted weird. It was weirdly crunchy. How could you describe the taste? <laughs> like raw fish with bones in it. What is that? That's a, a daddy long legs. They're, they're pretty friendly and they'll tickle you if they crawl on you. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Thank you. Pick it up, Jillian. No. Why? Do it. I can't. I don't want to. It's not gross. It's not poisonous or anything. Quick, get it. Grab its leg. I can't. Quick. Oh, shit. What is that little thing? There you go. Woo! <laughs> go, Jillian. <laughs> Broke its leg off. Wait. I'm trying to get it on camera. <laughs> I'm trying to put it on you. Wait, be still. Oh, shit. What? Alright. Team Holder. Remember everything I tell you, Les Holder. Okay. Well, uh, I'm not sure what the shirt means, but um, I assume that this person is running around bare ass naked right now. Is that common for this area? Uh, sometimes, sometimes. Uh, there are definitely some people around here who like to run around naked. Uh, and more power to them, because I don't think I would run around naked. I wouldn't want to be caught by somebody. I don't know why I'm folding it either. <laughs> This is a this is a white oak. Uh, it's got very kind of flaky bark. Looks like it comes off in like sheets. Flowering dogwood. Jillian, cool. what? What, do you, what do you think about all this? It's cool. I'm learning about trees. I didn't know the names of them before. There's a lot of trees out here. <laughs> Where are you taking us? Uh, we're gonna go to um, an old sawmill um, that was shut down, or uh, it operated uh, in the 1800s and it was shut down in the, the late 1800s. Um, I'm not exactly sure why, but uh, there's uh, they took all the equipment out, but the buildings are still there, um, and there's some really cool uh, remnants of it, and uh, that's what we're gonna go check out. All right. Here's some poison ivy. No, oh, it's up there. Don't worry. There's some poison ivy on top of this uh, building. Um, you'll usually find it in uh, any 
anywhere from just a small like little plant on the ground to a really hairy looking vine uh, up to and farther north you can find it in up to like a six foot shrub uh, which can be ridiculous um, but yeah if you if you don't know what poison ivy looks like if you remember leaves of three let it be then you'll never get into poison ivy because there's a lot of stuff that has three leaves on it It's kind of cool though, because it's like historical buildings, I guess. But there, all this writing and trees and stuff make it look creepy. I wouldn't want to come here at night. Hey, look! It's part of that tiki mouse mask we found that one time, and it scared us because it was creepy looking. <laughs> Oh, nice. Hmm. There's a little, there's another stick bug on its butt. I'm gonna back out of your way so you don't land on me. Okay. Nice. Sure. Remember when we found those tiki masks? Oh, here's part of one. place is dark as hell, but for some reason it looks pretty nice in this camp. Uh, this Sama was uh, shut down in the late 1800s. Uh, I think it was abandoned because um, it didn't make enough money or something. Uh, all the built, most of the buildings are still here. Um, there are some that have been torn down, and all the equipment is gone because someone would hurt themselves on it, probably. Hey. But uh, something really cool about the uh, a lot of the 1800s sawmills is they used um, uh, washers that were stamped with uh, that sawmill's emblem, and then they used those kind of as a, a currency to trade back and forth between the other sawmills. Um, and uh, you can still find them around here if you know where to look. Uh, I met a guy who was walking through here with a, a uh, metal detector and he, and he was looking for those and I don't think he had found any yet, but if you do find them, they are worth quite a bit of money. Um, pretty sketchy place. A lot of darkness and poison ivy. Poison ivy is like all over the place. And I'm wearing chacos, so, you know, I'm kind of scared out of my mind right now. I'm not trying to die. At least not today. So, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Seeing all the different graffiti and the uh, just kind of talking about what people back in the day used to use this place for. My overall experience was really fun and it helped me not to think about school or what kind of homework I had to do when I got back. I would recommend the experience to somebody else just to try it at least once, if, at least, even if they're not an outdoor person. My shoes! How are you? It feels good. Uh, this, is a, this is a great trip for me. Um, 
Uh, I always like to take people out uh, to experience something firsthand. I'm really glad that she liked it a lot. Um, I think she learned a lot and uh, this has really benefited all of us to, to be out here away from our classes and just to uh, relax and uh, get rid of some stress that we had pent up for a while. Some of my favorite moments were uh, for this trip were uh, definitely uh, re-exploring the sawmill. Uh, that was it's always really interesting. I, I really like uh, the colors of it and how um, it's really vibrant. On the next episode of Let's Go Outside. All right. So basically, uh, this is the aftermath of what happened yesterday. Charlie's in the middle of the woods. He just called out to us. I think he might be in trouble. Oh, shit, a bee! <laughs> I'm gonna tear down this tent. Now I'm uh, putting the rain fly on. Right now I'm just prepping up the meat. This is not a really good meat cutter, but uh, it's gonna actually, I think should have one. So, one of the dangers of uh, filming out here is you get mosquito bites. And I guess I was recording during the time because I have a big, giant ass mosquito bite on my forehead and it looks like I got hit by a golf ball. So whenever you're paddling, you want to make sure that your paddle um, is, fits you properly. You want to flip it upside down and take a knee. You don't want to miss out on our camping canoeing adventure.